Another winter day in the UP, another snowstorm. Hey there outdoor YouTubers, it's Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors and like I said earlier, we have been getting some snowfall, a lot of snowfall up here in uh, Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Uh, month of February in particular, lots and lots of snow uh, for the month of February this year. So you know, uh, my new hobby has become just plowing, shoveling, that sort of thing. And one of the things that uh, most of us up here in the UP have been doing almost on a daily basis is keeping our driveways cleared, right? Whether you're using a shovel, snow scoop, uh, snow blower, or snow plow, it seems like it's almost been a, a daily routine to do something with the driveway, to clear out some amount of snow in the driveway. Uh, and that's what I'm doing today. Uh, I'm out in the plow truck today. Gonna take care of the driveway. It's my neighbor. All running his short hairs again. plow to give you a little push out of the bank. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And you know, um, years when you get a lot of snow, like this year, it's kind of interesting. Sometimes those driveways can start to close in a little bit. You know, if you keep your driveway open with a plow truck, uh, like I do, and my driveways, it's, it's a little long. Um, you know, once the banks get so high, you can't really throw the snow up on top of the banks with just a plow truck, you know. You can push the snow up and you can kind of throw it up a little ways, but then once the banks get so high, the snow will just come tumbling back down. You can't get the snow up on top of the bank. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, the driveway's getting kind of narrow. Uh, the banks on the sides are, are too high for me to throw it up on there. So, it, you know, now it just starts to narrow. The snow just falls back in. You can only push it as far as the banks are. You can't really get it up over the bank. And that's kind of where I'm at now. Um, I think I'll be fine. I think it's gonna be wide enough where it won't be an issue. But, uh, hey, never know, we'll see. Another fun thing that uh, most of us up here in the UP have been dealing with is getting the snow off our roof, you know, like of our house, uh, outbuildings, sheds, barns, that sort of thing, garages. 
And I do the same thing. Me and my sons uh, went up on uh, our roof, shoveled it off the other day, kind of uh, in anticipation of this storm that we're getting now. And we got it all cleared off, which was cool. Uh, you know, if you're not really familiar uh, with areas that get uh, the amounts of snow that we get, you can get so much weight on uh, roofs of uh, houses and different buildings that roofs have collapsed in, you know. Um, you really can get, a, snow really can start to weigh a lot, you know, when you get up in the hundreds of inches piling up on it. And yeah, sometimes if you don't take care of it, it it'll actually uh, collapse in uh, roofs of buildings and houses. So that's another thing up here in the UP. These uh, heavy snow years, almost everybody gets up on their roof tries to clear it off you know some people with metal roofs are really really steep uh, slopes to their roof maybe don't have to worry about it as much but uh, it's it's kind of another thing that you got to deal with with all this snow you know another thing that a lot of us up here in the UP like to do is uh, snowmobile okay uh, you know and it, it's same with me I got a couple snowmobiles uh, like to ride them around a little bit like to use them for ice fishing that sort of thing and one thing, if you're not familiar with snowmobiles and you're not familiar with uh, the amounts of snow that we get up here in the UP and other areas, um, is you can actually get too much snow for snowmobiles as far as if you're going to try to go off trail. And that's the case this year. Um, the areas around my house where we do some snowmobiling, if I get off of the trail where I haven't driven a snowmobile periodically throughout the winter, I'm getting stuck like immediately uh, the depths of the snow it's just too deep uh, for the type of snowmobiles I have so I kind of have to stick to where I've been driving uh, throughout the winter now they do make some snowmobiles that are designed for deep powder and they can go in a lot a lot of places but uh, you know I, I got buddies uh, that got those kind of sleds and hey they're they're out there getting stuck too so there is an awful lot of snow in the woods um, even with the deep powder sleds, guys are getting stuck. They kind of enjoy it, but guys are out there getting stuck. And I know me personally, I've kind of got just normal run-of-the-mill snowmobiles. And if I get off trail, I'm getting stuck immediately. So, you know, that, that might be something, uh, if you're not used to deep snow, if you're not used to snowmobiling, that might surprise you, right? You might think, uh, hey, snowmobiles, they just drive wherever on the snow. It's not actually the case when you start getting into the hundreds of inches of snow you can actually get stuck quite easy, uh, even with a snowmobile. Another thing this deep snow does, which might surprise some people, again, that aren't used to uh, deep amounts of snow, is it just turns uh, our lakes to slush, okay? Um, you know, up here in the UP, midwinter, the lakes are froze over, and, and they're froze over good and solid, you know, for the most part, unless there's something unique about them. But, the, uh, the lakes freeze over, and of course it makes it for uh, real safe conditions for ice fishing. But one weird thing that happens when you get a lot of snow on top of that ice, all that snow weight actually pushes that layer of ice down, actually below the water line. And what you'll get is the water will creep up through the cracks in the ice or holes that ice fishermen have uh, drilled. And you'll actually get a lot of water on top of the ice. Even though the ice would remain safe for going out on, you'll get all this slush on top of it, and it makes it really difficult to get around on the ice. Um, like certain lakes that maybe they were driving cars out on earlier uh, in the season, or four-wheelers out on, it can get really difficult to the point where you can't even drive like four-wheelers, side-by-sides, or uh, trucks out on the ice because the slush conditions are so bad. And then when the slush conditions really get bad, you Sometimes you can't even take snowmobiles out on the ice. And that's kind of what we're experiencing now. Uh, a lot of the inland lakes where I fish, it's actually pretty dicey to even drive a snowmobile out on them. So that's another thing that's probably a little strange or different um, if you're not used to living in areas that get like high amounts of snow in the winter, is these high levels of snow can actually turn the lakes to slush. Even though they're perfectly safe to, to walk out on and still fish, a lot of times you just can't drive anything out on the lakes. So pretty much uh, for this whole month of February of 2019, everywhere you go, everyone you talk to, the topic becomes the snow, right? Like, hey, uh, 
keeping your driveway open. Hey, did you get up on your roof and shovel the roof? Or, wow, can you believe it? School's canceled again. You know, how much firewood are you going through? You know, yeah, I'm going through a lot of firewood. Um, everything's kind of been revolving around the snow, especially for this month of February. It's been really crazy. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, some of the sights and sounds of all the snow that we're getting up here in the UP. Um, but I got uh, I got some plowing to do here, so I think I'm going to have to get after it. But hey, remember to hunt, fish, laugh, repeat. Steve Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Hey, thanks for watching, and God bless.